Hi guys, <clears throat> welcome to Motorhome Rehab Ranch. If you have a GMC motorhome, like to have one, you just want to learn more about it, you're in the right place. And a special shout out to our ranch hands that helps us by supporting us to be able to make more videos, to answer questions and all that kind of stuff. At the end of the video, I'll tell you how you can also be a ranch hand. Uh, but right now, let's get into something about a GMC that maybe you know, maybe you don't. Um, see what happens. Oh, hey guys. Hang on one more. Woohoo! Free game. Hi. Jim with uh, Co-op Motor Works and Motorhome Rehab Ranch and my slot, my slot machine. <clears throat> We're going to talk about a few things here today about some stuff you should have in your glove box if you're driving. It's called spares. It's called countermeasures, backup. First one, if you guys own, you're still running a carburetor. One of these cute little things right here okay you need this in your glove box what is it it's carburetor filter this little five micron filter is in the front of the carburetor so you come up to your carburetor you got your fuel line in here now this this fuel line we have here, this is a braided stainless Teflon line fuel hose with a 700 degree pyro shield on it. <laughs> so if you have a vapor lock between the carburetor and the mechanical fuel pump, this will stop it. So anyway, you come in here, you take a 5 8 line wrench, line wrench like this, and you take off the... Uh, the carp, the fuel line, okay? So you take that off. Then, one inch wrench, open in wrench, one inch. Loosen that, and you take this little cylinder off. Now really be very careful with this, let me show you why. When you come out, there's a spring in there. Here's the filter, and there's a little seal right there. This one doesn't want to come off. That's fine. There's a little clear seal. Some of them, sometimes they'll pop out. Without this seal on there, this thing will not seal. It will leak. You go up in here. There's a spring. So we can take this thing off, you'll have a little bit of fuel, spring comes out, and here's the filter. Now why is this important? This is a 5 micron filter. Rochester put it in front of that carburetor to protect the carburetor. Because Rochester knew that if any material over 5 microns got through into that carburetor, it's going to clog up all those little tiny passages and stuff. Okay. So this little cartridge filter, part number on it, get your pen, is a Wix 330-48. 330-48. You need to have an extra one of these. <clears throat> so to put it in, put your spring in there. Filter goes in, open side out. Actually, it'll only fit in there one way. You got your filter you put the filter in here you got the seal right there and make sure you don't cross thread this it, they're they're machine threads and if you cross thread it, it's certainly never going to seal so you go right in there like that tighten it with your run inch wrench take your fuel line reconnect it 
use your 5 inch line wrench tighten it down why use a line wrench because it doesn't distort the nut okay <clears throat> and you're ready to go had a guy one time that picked up a bad load of gas in Georgia and uh, it took him nine of these things to get to Toronto nine of them were clogged up driving along all of a sudden it won't go any faster you notice and you know, a little further it actually is slowing down a little bit try to push the gas it doesn't go anywhere this could be clogged so carry an extra one with you carry the wrenches to uh, to replace it if you got any questions on that give me a call now you guys with fuel injection <clears throat> you don't have that of course but you should carry extra filters that are in your system because again fuel is not as clean as it used to be uh, and you need to keep that stuff away from your fuel injection or your carburetor, okay? All right, let's <clears> talk <throat> so about another one. This one is called the governor gear. You say, well, what, what does that mean to me? Well, our transmission is the only GM transmission or only transmission that uses an external governor. The 400 transmission that they say ours is a 400 with sprag gears and backwards, blah, blah, blah. It has an internal governor. This was the only transmission ever made with an external governor. Okay? Come on out. I'll show you what it, what it looks like. Okay? Let's go with me. Come on. Come out of here in the big house. Hey, what's this Volkswagen doing in, a, in the big house? <laughs> Hi, Annie. Hi. This, this is Annie. She's also a GMC owner. Okay, right here. This is our one of our test stands. <clears throat> the header would normally be here and it's taken off. Why? Because if you have headers on your coach, to get the governor out, you got to take this header side off. Now, if you have manifolds, you don't have to, but manifolds are getting rustier and rustier. So what do you do? You take this off. Okay. And then you pull on this little booger. <coughs> I'm going to need both hands. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So you pull it out, and there's the gear. Now you see, this one's new. When, when we build a transmission, you've got to have a new governor gear. But, you know, if you did not know about that in a 425, you wouldn't replace it. So here's what it looks like. Okay, see that drift pin right there. Say you're out in the middle of nowhere and this, this thing shears off. What will happen is you'll only have first gear and reverse. Ooh, okay. So you pull the governor out. That wrist pin, you knock it out. How do you do that? Well, it just so happens that along with the governor gear in the kit, comes <laughs> a finishing nail so what do you do with that you put it right on there and hit it with a hammer it pops the drift pin out and then you can take the governor out okay now you put the new governor <clears throat> right in the hole take an eighth inch drill bit drill it all the way through through this through that right he probably boogered up that nail by now, right? So we'll throw that out. But how about this? The kit comes with a second nail. Hey! And a new drift pin. Okay? So what you do, 
there's a hole there you've cut it you put this drift pin in there you hammer the drift pin in and then you finish it by hammering it in flush with the nail okay so now the gear that has stripped off that doesn't allow this to move by the way a good way you you'll know that this is a stripped out one you won't you won't go into second but then also uh your speedometer won't be working because this is the takeoff for your speedometer gear and this is down below this strips off this doesn't move anymore the speedometer doesn't work okay so then to put it back in you just put it right in that hole This is tight. It's a fresh motor. Come on, baby. Yeah, get it to kind of spin down on that speedometer gear. Let's see. There it goes. It goes right down in there. Come on. <clears throat> One of the guys wrote me a note said they appreciate the fact that I don't, when I'm putting something in, I don't do it first to make sure it goes in easy. People hate that. Well, I don't do that. This governor gear has to spiral in as it goes in. See, it's a spiral cut. So you get it in there, you get it to get in the gear. And push it down. There. All right. Bailing wire goes back over the top, and it's in. So everybody, whether you have fuel injection or not, everybody has a 425 automatic transmission, and everybody has a governor gear, and everybody needs to have one of these extra in your glove box. A hammer. Uh, I'd say a six pack of beer too, okay? Um, did a story one time. This guy was a, a retired Navy uh, captain <clears throat> and he called me, he was in St. Augustine, he dropped off the highway, boom, all he had was first gear. So he limped into the RV park in Daytona, called me up, so I came over, brought him a governor gear, so we called the story the captain and the governor. <laughs> so anyway, I think it's taken off the website now. But got to have one of these. If you don't, it's a really slow ride home in first gear. All right? Well, look, thanks for the time, and uh, I, hope, I hope this is something that will help you. Um, remember we were talking about the uh, carb filter? Tell you a story there. So... I'm working on this motorhome, and I finally got it where I thought we could go to a rally, go to Sunshine Statesman Rally. And I took off with Janie, and we got about an hour out, and I noticed the thing wasn't driving any fast anymore. It wouldn't go. Oh, no. So I pull over. Sure enough, my, gar my, my carb filter was clogged. I said, baby, we don't have, I don't have a, a, a carb filter. We're going to have to do something, I don't know, go home or whatever. She said, oh, no, no, I have two in my purse. You have two carb filters in your purse? I said, well, yeah, you've been telling people for decades to carry carb filters, so I've always carried two. <laughs> now, that's a great wife right there. She brought the carb filter. We made it to the rally. Life was good. Wix, 330-48 on that carb filter. And if you, want, if you don't have one of these, give me a call. We've got a bunch of them. All right. Thanks for uh, listening. Thanks for being a ranch hand and helping us. And uh, if there's anything else I can do for you, give me a call. See you next time.